Welcome, up. Welcome everyone to the film Vault. That's Anders and I'm Brian Bishop, our hosts for today. Top five time brought to us by the uh, assigner and decider this week. You would know this. Is this the first time? I think it's the it? second time. Okay. Yeah, we've had this second. before. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, Doesn't thanks. happen often, though, but uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Bihar. Yes, so thanks, Chris Bihar, for assigning us top five Wilhelm screams. I'm dying to know Chris's logic behind this because as interesting as the history of the Wilhelm scream is, and we'll get into that, the 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 the, the, the screams themselves are neither here nor there. You know what I mean? They're they're often shoehorned in, uh, often silly, mm-hmm. often self-referential. What, what did Mr. Spihar have to say for himself? So yeah, Chris, uh, explain yourself, boy. Chris Spihar comes to us uh, from way back when the Orange Couch. Ooh days and uh he's one of these listeners who was just looking for a film podcast back in the day and nice. uh typed in film and gave a few uh, listen and stuck with us and here he is all these years later and uh regretting his decision seems like a smart guy no. uh that was uh established right off the bat after i admonished him for uh, uh it sounded like he was hiking while while talking to me on the phone and uh why is that a problem because i couldn't understand what he was saying oh, okay well, I, I guessed I, I i misheard what he does for a living three different times maybe four because i still don't know <laughs> something, some some kind of ma- something to do with engineering and management and overseeing. He's a smart, smart guy, smart kid. He lives down there in San Diego, and yeah, he, he found our show uh, many, many years ago, and uh, he wanted to give back, so he decided Aww. to up. Uh, I think annual. He did the annual for both, uh, so he did the, uh, nice. the assigner and as well as the uh, the decider. So I guess we'll uh, assign. He'll he'll be assigning us another movie before another the year is movie. over. But Thanks, Chris. That's uh, really nice. The other way to support the show. Appreciate and to answer that. your question, he's always, you know, found this the Wilhelm screams interesting and kind mm-hmm. of funny, and uh, he wanted to hear a, a couple uh, jackasses do a deep dive on it. How so. do you not you you have specifically called out Wilhelm screams as annoying? Oh yeah, I don't like. It them. seems they're terribly distracting yeah. whenever I hear them. So, well, I mean, we'll get into this, and I'm assuming you did your research, and you probably went pretty far down the rabbit hole. Nope. Stop shaking your head like that. I don't believe it. Uh, I, I did. Th- they can be used effectively, I think, in comedy. Sure. Yeah. And they could have been used effectively before the internet. There's uh, a right time and a place for a Wilhelm. Because I think if you don't know, you don't recognize it, and most of us didn't. I, don't, I, I honestly do not remember if I recognized it before the internet brought it to my mm-hmm. attention. It's, it's essentially like a... It's like an audio meme. It's like oh, a movie meme. We should play a Will or Avery. I sent uh, you. I, I don't do. know if you have one queued or handy or whatever. Yeah, but imagine the a, 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 if a you've portion heard, of our audience does has not no know. idea what yeah. you're talking about. If you've heard this, <laughs> which you probably have, that was uh, very loud. We might want to mark that because that could blow out <laughs> some people's ears. Yeah, the love later will take care of it. Yeah, so if you've so. heard this, you're doing it again, huh? We're doing take two. <laughs> Then you, which you probably have, then yes, you, uh, you, you know what a Wilhelm scream is. Yeah, we heard it for for decades, mm-hmm. uh, literally decades before it became like a thing, and everyone was calling it out. And a lot of that has to do with so many things that we have now today because of the internet and communities getting together and people putting things together and pointing things out. Uh, me being a, an audio guy, you guy, you as well, like That's you right. know, recognizing drops and whatnot. Um, I don't know if there's other effects that, and I've been going back and forth all week. Like I almost was going to like bring a bunch of them that bug me the most. Well, you did that on your top five movie pet peeves. You did the, uh, the train or the, the truck. truck, horn. The, truck the, horn. the truck's the only one I recognize there's, frequently besides Wilhelm. A couple others. Mm. There's one that's a, it's a, it's a door, I don't, but I don't want to do it because it really does ruin things for people. Yeah. Once you hear yeah. it and you recognize it, like every time you the hear truck, it, the truck horn, I can't not hear. They're, they're not doing it anymore. Mm. They cut it short now. They oh, don't yeah. do the second one. Nearly as often. Oh, okay. I think it's been many, many years actually in a, since I've heard the truck second horn in a, in a new movie. But it just, it's so fucking annoying. And the Wilhelm scream, its origins are interesting for sure. And we'll, we'll get into that. And uh, really what it was was just kind of like audio engineers saying hello to each other. Yeah, a little wink. A little wink. And then there was even like almost competitions at, at, at sure. one point. Like Could who can use in? them more yeah. and more effectively it's to the point now though if you recognize it you can't use it effectively unless you're using it for comedy's sake which, ironically yeah which has been used for comedy's sake and in fact my number one is my favorite and it's very funny same yeah uh yes everything anderson said is true um well, I, was, I was gonna add something to that that was very, very i'm sorry oh, I was um there droning. was a mid-credit scene in uh, dungeons and dragons this is going back to no, the last no, no, episode I'm, where i'm, 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 I'm joking if you're not a Patreon member, you won't ever hear Brian's uh, clever observation that he had during a mid-credits sequence of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, that's He's true. Master what class a limited audience. Screenwriting. Avery, 
I feel like you're being sarcastic. Do you think you can build an entire <laughs> master class around that one observation? <laughs> it all began when I was sitting in a dark, walking out of a dark theater. No, but I remember now what I was going to say, which is never once did it even cross my mind until this very moment to use a Wilhelm scream as a drop. Like, it feels, feels uh, hacky. Where would it go? Yeah, and Kroll well, would mean, get the joke. He would not. Well, I used to play the sound of a man dying quite a bit. Uh, that was a drop that I had. It's just like a man going, Arr! and then you can hear him hitting the floor. I played that quite a bit, especially, oh, God, I, I do was kind an awful, of awful that. person. I remember a, a, a girl called, and I, yeah, I don't want to get into it, but it had to do with, here I go getting into it, but it had to do with somebody dying during during uh, dur- during an act. And of course. On top of her. Coitus. Oh, kind of like Private Benjamin. And it was a family member, which made it worse. Oh. Yeah, it was bad times. Bad. Oh, and I remember, husband? I remember playing that sound effect. <laughs> cutting cutting, <laughs> cutting the uh, the floor dropping apart out. I'd cut that would be the best iteration, <laughs> Avery. Best possible scenario. All right, so. Anything else is worse. Oh, we didn't, even, we didn't even say that uh, we're going to treat uh, our listeners to our, our fresh... Uh, off the recording uh, block. Oh yeah, uh, a, a, uh, a, a a good piping hot s- uh, session, uh, mm. red light green light session with uh, Brian, myself, and Florence Brummer from uh, the Chateau Maman. The, uh, the suite at the Chateau Maman. And we did a very. It's been a while since we got together with Florence to record, and uh, we had a spirited, uh, yes, very uh, fairly f- uh, lengthy. The first uh, round that we did was fairly lengthy. That's so true. Action, up, upcoming action movies that we Brian Brian and I red light, green lit, or black lit. And, and uh, uh, normally these go in the, uh, the Patreon episodes, but we thought, hey, these are uh, fun, these are enjoyable. Let's let everyone in on the, uh, on the, on the fun. Since we just did it last night, we're gonna we'll jam it into this episode. So uh, before uh, we do the credits and before everything's wrapped, once we're done with our top five, and we hear the listener top five. We will uh, have that for you. And before we get into the Florence history, Florence got us good. That's all I'm gonna say. But good. Before we get into the history of the Wilhelm scream, we're gonna say the phrase Wilhelm scream. A lot this mm-hmm. episode mm-hmm. Uh, to the so in the interest of avoiding like a mind numbing repetition, can I can I suggest maybe we use Wilski? No, Wilski. I'm not into this. What about a Willie? Nope. What about a, wh- a what about a, a whisker? Will- Willie is what not <laughs> a wet whisker. What about a whisker? A, whis- a whisker. No. What about a Willie? <laughs> Why a whisker? Well, w I for Wilhelm. And then it's S C R for screen. Mm. I was just imagining Brian yelling that out of the theater now. Oh, Willie. That's I just a heard Willie. a Willie. You hear a Willie? That's a Willie. That's yeah. a Willie. That's a Willie. Willie like a Willie. You know what they use it a lot is cartoons. It's all over TV. Oh, sure. And they use it in a lot of cartoons. The Willies? You're going to put it in your movie. You should. <laughs> it's in groupers. Oh, that's right. You said there's that. There's a Wilhelm scream. It's buried pretty good. So it, it's not. That's, there's also so many different ways that you mm. can implant them. Uh, I watched many montages, as I'm sure you did, looking for inspiration, looking for, uh, you know, I, I read, there's there's pages out there where it just lists all the movies, but then how do you go find the one True. in the movie, you know what I mean? So we, uh, over the last week, we watched a, a number of, uh, you and I both, a number of uh, montages, uh, and you can see that sometimes, like, you couldn't even really hear it, right, because it was so buried. Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's barely audible. I, uh... I have examples of good and bad willies. Okay, good. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not good, though. <laughs> not calling them willies isn't good. Good and bad whiskers. Usually when they use it, it's it's not real uh, creative. Uh, it's just usually someone being shot. Yeah. There was one movie I'd never heard of it. Or falling. Or falling. Fall out of falling, yeah. There was one where like it was it was countless uh, Native Americans being shot, <laughs> and they were all screaming the Wilhelm scream, which I found comical. <laughs> this is like from the 50s. And I think it was just lazy. Yeah. The sound that, editing. Yeah, it wasn't clever at all. No, but it was just like one after the other. Ah! Ah! They all were, no. I, I hate it. I hate it so, <laughs> so much. much. <laughs> what would that sound like over and over again? Uh-huh. <laughs> we're going to tell you. We're going to tell you where it was first used. We're going to tell you the second, the, 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 the first movie. <laughs> there it is. That it was ever reused in. We're going to tell you who actually did it. We're going to tell you who. Oh, they, should we do that at the top right now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I. I foolishly made my number five and my number four history Oh, cool. Lessons. All right, let's, let's do that then. Even though I've never seen either one of these <laughs> movies. Is that okay though? I mean, I've done that before and you've given me shit. Well, it depends on what the topic is. No, it does not. I can see in the clip like how they used it, whether it was effective wow. or not. I, I feel I like to... I've just said that exact argument. Was, I and if we're going with like top five characters, like you can't be yes, like, I've never I seen this I understand that. Mm, do you? Do you? This is really, listen, this is upsetting to the, to the legacy of the whisker. 
<laughs> I have six, though, because I have a tie for my number two. All right. All right, so... Uh, I want to hear the history. You're your number five. All right, so number five is my... Uh, uh, my number five would be fake history. Be fake episode. history? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm interested in that. Uh, 1951 a film called Distant Drums, and that is when a man first appeared to have made mm-hmm. that sound on the screen, even though it was a dub. It was something that they recorded. It was ADR, something that they looped. They recorded after, which is how they do a lot, especially if they're mm-hmm. out in the, in the field. So uh, I watched so many. I watched so many YouTube clips. I forgot to write it down, but... Apparently a uh, well-known. Oh, I did write it down. Look at me, uh, Shep Woolley, who was. Oh a, no, uh, we're gonna get there. What are you doing? Oh. You're. you're this, I'm is, I'm just talking this letter you're talking I'm, about. I'm beginning with the history. That's. What? All right, it kind of was, but you're right. You're right. Yeah, this is. <laughs> All right, but still, we'll get there in a minute. We'll get All right. there in a minute. All right. So. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that's what YouTube is for. <laughs> Distant Drums is a 1951 movie directed by Raoul Walsh. Oh. Raoul okay. Walsh, well, starring well, Gary Cooper. And this movie is hard to come by these days. It's uh, it's not it's not streaming on the old Prime over there. I, I didn't just look it up on Just Watch, but Wait, uh, are there problematic elements? I don't I'm know. I think it's been by Alligator. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's problematic elements. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm watching the trailer right now. Anyways, uh, there's yeah, there's so they're out uh, shooting on location, and uh, there's there's a man who gets bit by an alligator, and that's where we first mm. ever heard the sound, the Wilhelm scream. And by the way, it is uh, the f- <sighs> there it is. The file was known as man getting bit by alligator, which makes sense. Now, also in watching history and reading the history on the Wilhelm scream, I did find, as you often do on the fucking internet when you do research like this, all sorts of different facts being mm. thrown around. Uh, as far as how it came to be. Right. Right. So some dubious. Yeah. And how do you figure out which mm-hmm. one's right and which one's wrong? I mean, I did, I think, through Cross lots of research and, and hearing from the man himself who kind of came it, uh, brought it into being. So 1951 is the first time I'm mm-hmm. actually ever, ever hear it in Gary Cooper's uh, Distant Drums. Uh, Want to move on now? Sure. The fake history is for me, my number five is uh, 1977 Star Wars. Uh, when I, as a kid, I just assumed this is where the Wilhelm scream initiated. I was uh, a kid who didn't know any better. And when the uh, stormtrooper gets blasted by Luke Skywalker and falls into the abyss of the Death Star, uh, Ben Burt, sound designer, used uh, Wilhelm scream, uh, which I don't even know if it was known as a Wilhelm scream at that point. He's just. It I was. Think, it was? Was yeah. it known as Wilhelm Scream at that yeah. point? Yeah, that's okay. my number four. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Uh, this was the one I assumed were originated, but in fact, it had been around for nigh on two decades. Don't yeah, say that. That was the first time I'd seen it, too. Every time I would yeah. hear it I subsequently, it I would Star think, Wars, oh, Star Wars. Right? Yeah. Hey, because so many of us saw Star Wars so many times growing up. Sure. We'd watch it on a loop, right? Mm-hmm. We see it over and over again, so you'd pick up on little things like that, and it does really stand out. I mean, they really did, Ben Burt really did crank the level on it yeah. for that one. He wanted yeah. everyone to hear that stormtrooper falling to his death, and yeah, that, I, I would imagine m- many of us, uh, I gotta stop with that, I would imagine. I'm constantly <laughs> over here, like John Lennon, I gotta <laughs> stop it. Jesus. So this speaks to your number four, which is Ben Burt, when he was a student at USC, would use this in a lot of student films. He thought it was funny or thought it was clever and uh, or as an in-joke. And uh, when he became a very, very famous sound designer, uh, as in Star Wars, uh, he used it uh, throughout his professional career. Yeah, Ben Burt started putting it in, in mainstream mm-hmm. movies. And then some of his other friends who he went to school with are like, oh, I'll see you one better. And I'm going to put it in one of my mm-hmm. movies. And that's where it became like this crosstalk. And then everyone else started, like Tarantino got in on the action, and like uh, later filmmakers, now everyone's just like, I want a little uh, Wilhelm in mine, right? A little whiskey. Keep going. So, one of these is going to stick. The, 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 story, the story was that he, he found the sound, he liked the scream, and I can't even, I, 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 don't, I can't even go back and imagine what it would, oh, I imagine, what it would, it sounds what like it would sound like if, it wasn't a Wilhelm scream. Like, d- does it stand out as a funny, weird scream on its own? Or out of all the thousands of screams that are probably available in various libraries, you know what I mean? Is that I one? I guess if you're a sound designer and you've heard thousands of screams. That one in particular. That one kind of stands out. It spoke to Ben Burt for whatever mm-hmm. reason. So the story, one of the multiple stories that I read was that he didn't even have rights to the Warner Brothers archive, or as it were, to the, but he identified that as a, a, a scream that he liked mm. and he wanted to use in his films. He actually had to request it. And uh, That's he requested it as the uh, man gets bit by alligator, which was the first time it was used, like I said, in Distant Drums, 1951. Now, the second time that it was ever used was in 1953 in a movie called The Change at Feather River. And that what was, was the, the charge. The charge. That's what mm. I meant. 
the charge I don't I don't read good. Mm. And if the R is an N, yeah, it becomes right a change. Yeah. yeah. So the charge at Feather River uh, was where it was uh, Corporal. Uh, it was actually a character named Wilhelm. Wilhelm, yeah. yeah. It was like Lieutenant Wilhelm or something. And he's sitting there on the, he's like, I'm just going to pipe my, uh, pack my tobacco then and my t- uh, pipe. And then and he takes, his, takes a spear in the leg. And Native American uh, shoots an arrow right oh, into his an leg. Arrow, yeah. And that's when he screams. I thought that that, I used to think that was the first Wilhelm mm-hmm. scream, but it's not. It is not, mm-hmm. as we learned. That's a terrible use of it. It's Well, that's how a lot <laughs> of the, the uses neighbor. were back then. A lot of the uses uh, back then were people being hit with arrows and uh, or guns and, mm. and screaming with the Wilhelm. Why would you hit someone with a gun? Or the, or the bullet. Oh, a bullet. The bullet. Yeah, or How mad would you be if this is the last sound you made? What sound? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> 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 so that's when it got named the Wilhelm scream. Uh, and that's, I mean, like you said, it was like the uh, the 70s, early 70s is when... Uh, Ben Burr got a, got a piece of it, right? Mm. Um, oh, so what you were starting to say earlier, which I think is the most interesting part of the research, because I did not, we did a, a, a shallow dive on this a couple years ago. We did, we oh. talked Wilhelm Scream, and it's okay. a small little dissertation on it. I did not know all of the facts as I do now, and as you do as well. So why don't you go on to the next, I think this is the most interesting part, uh, where it actually came from, who actually voiced it. Oh, well, I think it's, known as uh, most likely to be Shep Woolley, the originator of The Scream. He, uh, I guess, was a well-known actor, voice actor. Back character in the day. actor. Character actor. He did six takes, take four and five. I heard five. Uh, four. Again, this is all. I don't five. think there's six takes. Take uh, Of the takes he did, up to six, mm-hmm. take four and take five are the most recognizable, the ones that you use most often. And, uh, yeah, he apparently would tell his kids and his grandkids, oh, yeah, that's me there in that, uh, that old scream. Uh, yeah, so I also read that uh, they, they couldn't substantiate it, but they have since substantiated it. Oh, now they have. They, they okay. do know that it, that it was uh, Chev Woolley. And Chev Woolley, whether you know it or not, everyone knows a little piece of Chev Woolley because oh, he's the guy. Chef. Chef. Like Chef. I don't read too good. Uh, he's the guy who wrote and sang. I think he wrote it. Oh, yeah. Um, not The Streak, but uh, some novelty song, right? Purple People. Even. That's it. Yes. Purple People, Which was the Minnesota Vikings like uh, song there for a while. Like, that it was, was like their long theme hair, song. Blah, 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 we don't purple need, People. We don't, we don't need that. It's better. When and also not, the original. That's not it? happening. It's much better. Oh. It's going to originate my Wilhelm scream. <laughs> that's right. The originator of the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> we'll get a new one. Yeah. A new whiskey from Avery over whiskey. here. You're singing uh, People. The People Eater. What's it going to sound like, Avery? Just to keep going back. There There's a band called A Wilhelm Scream. Really? Yeah. Are they any good? Are they a punk band? I don't know. They're not bad. Do you know? Yeah, I've heard it before. Yeah. All right. So I thought that was fascinating that uh, that that we've all heard that guy's voice in yeah. song form, and uh, now here he the is. Legend. So right, number four for me is uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark from 1981. I didn't see this Anderson until few years after it was released. I think it was two years two old. Two years when after it was released. When it came out. So at that point. I kind of knew the Star Wars guys were also behind Indiana Jones. Like I knew enough at that point. Uh, and I guess, two. no, no, when I finally saw it, when I was like seven or eight or whatever I was. Mm. Uh, and so I kind of just assumed it was like an inside joke. Uh, keep in mind, between Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars, and the ensuing Ranchers sequel, of the Lost Ark? Raiders of the Lost oh. Ark and Star Wars, and the ensuing sequels, I had seen combined all those movies dozens of times by the time I was like eight years old. Mm-hmm. So another Ben Burt property, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He snuck that, not snuck. It was pretty, pretty prominent actually mm-hmm. when he's uh, throwing a Nazi off his uh, moving truck. Mm-hmm. The Nazi goes uh, head first into the windscreen. What's he, what's, what's the sound? What's the sound like? Oh, we have a clip. Yeah. The play, Avery just played the clip. All right. Uh, number three for me before taking a, we'll take a, a, a quick break here uh, right after my number three mm-hmm. but uh, this is uh, I found it a creative and clever okay. and a fun way to use the uh, do you have any the, bad ones on your list the Wilhelm scream I guess not huh? I guess not I have two bad ones this one's a good one uh, it's 1982 Brian some of the same uh, familiar names uh, from from that era and from uh, the USC uh, school over there. That's they were right. all chumming, even though Speely never went to uh, USC. He was a hanger on. He was a, he hung out with those mm-hmm. guys, uh, even though Stephen Speely didn't direct Poltergeist. Uh, we have the, the Toby Hooper. Or there. did he? Or did he? Uh, but uh, we have Carol Ann. Carol Ann is mm-hmm. hanging out in the kitchen. There's always TV screens around Carol Ann, mm-hmm. right? If you recall, mm-hmm. with the Poltergeist, right? She's watching one of those like really fancy, futuristic 
kitchen TVs, those tiny little guys that people, the portable ones, right? That people used to think were so fancy because you could like walk <laughs> if you from had room one to room. of those, you're a baller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was watching one of those in the kitchen. And whatever she was watching, I could not identify it. I picked it apart. I watched it. I slowed it down. I rewound it many times. I could not identify the movie. It was a black and white movie. And the Wilhelm scream emitted from that tiny little TV that she was watching, which I found to be fun. Was it uh, Charger Winter Feather? Uh, no, because I would recognize that because that was my number four, Brian, if you recall. I didn't know if it was a crossover there. It would be cool if it was. Well, it would be and then there would be cool. great controversy, too, because you'd be like, are you, is this a, a separate pick or mm. is it the same pick because you already had that? But she's yeah, watching that. Yeah, right. I have to really think about that. Yeah, it's very was meta. It Star Wars? It was not Star Wars either. No, it wasn't. And before you ask if it was Indiana <laughs> Jones, uh, it was not that. Was either. it? Okay. I feel like he addressed that. Now, I'm not sure. It might have been Distant Drums. It could have been a man being it, eaten by a. Uh, an alligator, but I think I would have recognized that probably. Was it Sheb's home video? <laughs> it was not Sheb. <laughs> You're live in the studio recording it for the first time. And it was not. She was just watching some inappropriate little kid movie, like a movie that a little kid should not be watching, and you hear the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you have a, you have a clip. There it is. Oh, I really hope the level later takes care of this, because people's ears are getting blown it's up. It's very hard to get it. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, uh, number three for me, because you went first, uh, is my first example of what I think is a bad use of a Wilhelm screen. <clears throat> you alluded, I, did, I, I never thought we would have alluded to uh, the filmmaker behind my number three, but yes, Tarantino uses the Wilhelm in, in uh, more than one movie, he multiple loves films. Yeah. Um, and the first time he ever used it, I did not like it. It's hard to no. hear. What? You didn't like it when you first heard it and you recognized it? Yeah. In Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. No. A, you, yes. Really? Did you see? Oh, but you saw Reservoir oh, no. Dogs like years no. later. Yeah, right? I saw. I saw it after the okay. fact, and I may have picked up on the screen in ensuing viewing. Okay, okay. I didn't. Sorry, the first the first use of it in his film catalog is in Reservoir Dogs, nineteen ninety two, and uh, so this movie had been built up to me as this violent, hard like. You saw it after you saw Pulp Fiction. I did. Yeah. It was very confusing. It was uh, this violent, uh, uh, hard edge like a uh, heist movie, and I'm I'm, I'm preparing not. myself for this. Uh, this harrowing adventure, and uh, all of a sudden, well, I got a clip. Everybody can play it. All of a sudden, this happens. <laughs> there it is. While well, Steve Buscemi is eluding the police, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm like, wait, is this movie a joke? Is it supposed to be funny? I no, was, I don't believe any of these things crossed your brain at all. Why don't you believe? Because I mean, it's it's happened so fast. He's you have running two from movies the cops you and he, he put he pushes some dude like on the on the street. It's yeah. like it wouldn't stand out. And you're like, wait a minute, is this is this movie to be taken seriously? Because I heard no. I wasn't Stop questioning the, the whole film. Was that though. a willy? Yeah. Was that a willy? <laughs> wait a minute. What movie? Were you con- wait a minute. Is there a I trend know. here? Were you confused? I was By confused. another Tarantino movie. I was confused. I was confused with the tone. <laughs> because for, just for, just let the record show that Brian has said that it's his most confusing movie he's ever... <laughs> it was number one, right? It might have been. <laughs> when we do top five most confusing movies, Pulp Fiction was Brian's... I've since worked out... <laughs> Uh, I would imagine there's a Willem scream in there, too, somewhere. No, I don't believe there I is. I bet there is. There's one in Death Proof, and there's one in Kill Glorious Bill. Bastard. There's like and a few Kill in Kill Bill. Yes, Bill. Like you right. kind of went wild with the Kill Bill. That's correct. No, I didn't. Sorry. This, it bumped me is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm watching. I'm in the midst of this um, very intense movie, and all of a sudden there's like this jokey Wilhelm scream, and I'm like, what the fuck was that? What? what uh, is this, is, um, is this like did you a, know what a Wilhelm scream was at the time? Yeah, oh, this is the no- yes. At this point, I don't know if you did. Yes, right. I did. I don't think you did. <laughs> He'd heard a whisker. I, I, I don't know, Willie's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I did. That's what I'm saying. Before the internet, I'm not sure that I had identified this. I as think this I sound. read about it in like. I don't believe this. Uh, screen Rant or one of the one of those magazines. You the read whisper, about the sound effect. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> and then you like, could <laughs> identify what it was. Okay. This, it was, it was sounded out phonetically. No, like I, I agree with you. Like when Mr. Blonde was cutting off the cops here, and like it, it pans away, and you just hear, <laughs> like on, a, and, he, and it kept doing it. I'm like, this is goofy. For weirdly enough, that didn't bother me. It was the man, the man was in pain. It was it was the guy on Marvin the street. Nash. It was the guy on the street that That's made right. you feel like it was goofy. But when it happened with the cop with, over and yeah, over with again, Marvin Nash. I just thought it was cheap. I'm like, uh, they couldn't afford. You know better what? Though I, I have to meet you halfway and say the first time didn't bother me, but here, here's the clip over and over again. Ah! Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 That's just got egregious. Okay. Just got egregious. All right, Brian. I, I I'm sorry to challenge you. I just, I'm not buying what you're selling. <clears throat> Why? 
That's a weird thing not to buy. I believe Brian read the sound of the magazine. <laughs> and no, then, I read, I read and like then he's like, oh, I know that sound that, that they just spelled out in this article no, that no, I'm no. reading. And, was, oh, there it is. I just read this no, article recently. Like article and now like, there it is. And, and, and this is supposed to be serious, uh, gritty movie. And I'm not buying this movie anymore. No, There's a mini it. disc with the sound effect. Oh, the that had a little floppy. Yeah. A little no, floppy you can maybe put. Maybe I saw like a feature in, in the cellophane. You did not see any featurette on Wilhelm Scream in the 90s before watching I was Reservoir already aware of it at that point. Although Brian? it may have been a later rewatching. Uh, no, Brian. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying anything you're selling. I, That's such a weird thing not I to know. accept. I you know. Gotta, <laughs> pick, gotta pick your battles. Well, my next one's from 2007. Okay. Go after the break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do, we'll get into that. I still got three left because I got a, a tie. That's right. What oh, a you, tease. You can look forward to that. Any crossover? No, definitely not. It's been used in, I think, over 400 movies, like 400 major movies. We're not counting like the small little independent movies. No, you like to uh, give me shit for my enjoyment of the first, my number one. Oh. So that will not be on your list. Okay. Or will it? Find out next. Or will it? <laughs> will it? Well done. <laughs> Two weeks worth of Amazon purchases to get through. I'll try and get through all of these in a timely manner. Uh, let's see. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just get into it. Have you got the music ready? Sorry to button hook you like that. Here are, the thing, here are the things that are purchased on the Amazon banner. Zoomerion.com. Yeah. Four. Thunder... Thunderer track grip, all season radial tires, Flexispot electric standing desk. I dated a girl for a while. She was a funder. She worked in loans and finances, and she was a funder, and I called her Thunder Thighs, and she didn't like it. Oh, I can see why that would be problematic. She had thin thighs, so I thought I could get away with it, but she didn't like no, it. That should have been at the end credits. For thunder <laughs> Thighs, yeah. Dragons, Is been. Thunder Thighs acceptable? <laughs> Medea, 8,000 BTU window air conditioner. Breville Smart Oven Air Fryer Pro. Medea? Medea, M-I-D-E-A. Is no, the, wait, is Tyler Perry's making ACs now? Making ACs, yeah, people can't afford the uh, the, the units. Look at uh, George Foreman. That's right, expand it. I see those. There's I a see, George Foreman movie coming out. Can't wait. Yeah, I saw that. It looked a lot like the uh, Tom Hardy uh, 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 Bronson oh. poster. It reminded me of that a lot because oh, he looked oh. like, like uh, there. you get those, you see those Foreman grills in uh, antique malls. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. In the box. I used to have one cooked really? around an awful lot. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, All yep. the grease drips right off. Good for good for burgers, chicken. Collect that tr- grease, you put it on a salad. Make it unhealthy. I think that's, yeah, that's right. It's a real knockout package. <laughs> HP Smart <laughs> Tank Cartridge-Free Printer. HP Smart Tank Cartridge-Free Printer. There we go. Greenworks Cordless Lawnmower. Intel Nook 11 Nook. Atlas Canyon Mini PC. Vitamix 12 cup food processor attachment, ODK computer desk, TCL 32 inch class 3 series full HD smart TV, perfect keto MCT oil, newer, newer aluminum teleprompter, Insta 360 flow AI powered smartphone stabilizer, Casio men's G Shock watch, DIY mini belt sander, McCulloch steam cleaner, Kindle paperweight signature edition. Buyer Dynamic Studio Headphones, Amerix Fire Extinguisher, Earthbox Garden Kit, Black Classic Bull Bar for a Toyota F- FJ Cruiser, Paint Depth uh, Gauge, a gauge that depths, uh, gauges your paint depth, two Steelmaster Magnetic Bulletin Boards, Surfin's MP3 Player, Apple AirTag 4 Pack, Fender Mustang Headphone Amplifier, Xbox Elite Wireless Controller, also. See, <laughs> you can play some more music because I mean it's or long, right? Or you can just right? play the Wilhelm scream underneath the entire. No, 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 don't do that. that. Seymour Auger, a Seymour Auger, bright, bright tech ambiance solar powered string lights. Amazon Reload for a hundred bucks. Uh, pure Egyptian cotton bed sheet set. Brooks Ghost sneakers. American Cardinal readers volume one through eight. Single serve coffee maker with a milk frother and. Finally, Nutrafol Men's Hair Growth Supplement. It's insulting. Those are, those are just a, a, but a taste. Here in the movies, we're click through. This is the last time we talked at y'all. Somebody clicked through and got reality bites. Hey, kiss, kiss, bang, bang, fuck to the ass. 
Oh, Shane Black, uh, Peak Shane Black. Uh, Drag Me to Hell, unrated. Unrated. <laughs> a single man was clicked through. Hey, look at that. A joyride. Joyride was uh, clicked through. <coughs> Use it more. Use it. Joyride. Causes coughing. Joyride. I like that joyride. You remember the joyride about the truck driver? Mm, no, I don't think so. No? Yeah. yeah, Ted Levine did the voice. No, Good really? Stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. I never saw. Uh, Dragon Slayer. Fuck to the ass of the Dragon Slayer. Look at this. Cape Fear was clicked through as well as a separation. Hey, look at a separation. That's a, that's, a, that's a good one. Switchblade Sisters as well as Fletch Lips. Hmm. Rushmore is clicked through as well as The Lives of Others. Rush less. Knock Knock was clicked through as well as Chappy. Fuck to the yes, chaps. Got a little bit, chaps. Heist is crimes. Apocalypto is clicked through as well as Shrek the Third. Raw. <laughs> Fucking raw. Hell yeah. E.T. was clicked through. Uh, well, home screen in the old E.T. There is. I think there is, there actually. Is, yeah. E.T., the extraterrestrial. T- uh, Titane. Titane was clicked through. Same director as Raw. Look at that. Titane and Raw. Double feature. Avatar, The Way of Water. The Quiet Girl. Wham! Bam! Roy Lichtenstein in The Art of Appropriation. I need to see that movie. Uh, Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham. Theodore Rex was clicked through as well as True Romance Director's Cut. I say the director's cut. What's this? What you saw is the director's cut. Probably, right? Yeah. I mean, I know that movie so well that I would recognize anything off, oh. anything different. I remember I have seen a couple um, uh, scenes that were deleted. I wonder if they just jammed those back. The room. Oh, I need that. Do I need it? Atticus needs to grow up quicker so I can go back and rewatch some of these things. Because I can't just do it on my own. No, you can't do that. The Godfather trilogy was clicked through, as well as Wanted. With All right. Curving bullets. Was it? Not bad. Not, not bad too movie. not too terrible. Mm. Morgan Freeman. That's right. Like you've never seen him a, before. A rare turn. I saw a movie and Morgan Freeman was in the credits and he wasn't in the movie. And it was somebody <laughs> else named Morgan Freeman. What the fuck movie was that? I'm like, wait a minute, Morgan Freeman was not in there. What was it? Was it uh Barbara <gasps> you know Star was? Go to Del Mar? It was the big the big hit. He was in the credits? He was in the somebody named Morgan Freeman was oh, in, the, in the credits. Yeah. Because it wasn't a, a massive cast. True. All right. Hey. Hey. Back to the program. Let's do it. I was thinking about it, Anderson, because what you're saying did actually make sense. Keep in mind that I didn't see Reservoir Dogs until at least the second half of 1995. And by that point, there was like an internet presence. I was able to like look things up. So I'm, I'm telling you at some point early on in my viewings of this movie, I, I knew what a Wilhelm scream was. I didn't see it in 92 when it came out. We were you calling them whiskeys back then? <laughs> Willies. Willies. <laughs> Willie whiskers. That's right, right. whiskers. I kind of like whiskers. All right, Brian. I, I still don't believe it. I mean, there's nothing you can Why do. would you not believe that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think that in 1995, you're like, this Wilhelm scream is really throwing me off. I just don't. No, but keep in mind. No, I think not. maybe when you caught up with the movie, like in 2003, was probably when you first saw it. Uh, I think maybe <laughs> on like subsequent, subsequent viewings, like in the, uh, like probably, as it probably as like was five sub- years it ago. It probably was a subsequent viewing. Yeah. You're right about that. Uh, but I did own the movie on VHS. So see, that's, like, that's my thing. Is like if you're, if you're, if it's occurring to you on subsequent viewings, then you're not having that initial. I don't want to go too deep in the weeds here and expose you for being a liar. You have. A liar! You got uh, movies you haven't seen on your list. I'm, I'm being honest about that. I have not seen them. I think they're worthy of being on my list because of where <laughs> they stand in history. About that. Where they stand in history. All right. They're they're, they're important. Uh, Wilhelm screams. What's on, What's on your, what's your tie for number two? Ties. My torch for number two. Brian, I, I I believe you. I believe that you read. Really? I believe that you read. Do you believe that I believe it? <laughs> the sound effect you may know as a Wilhelm scream sounds yeah. like yeah. I believe that you read that, and then took that. <laughs> To the, the screening of <laughs> Reservoir Talks. That's right. I saw it <laughs> and at then Sundance <laughs> when it premiered. I saw it in the theaters. I did not. I saw the old All right, Buzz uh, out the window in Toy Story. It, it, it introduced uh, a whole new generation to the Wilhelm scream in 1995. And it was a pivotal moment in that movie, too, when Buzz goes gets knocked out the That's window. Right. Uh, it's what ca- causes the main conflict and causes all the toys to think that... Uh, uh, what the fuck? Woody, Woody, Woody has it out for mm-hmm. him, and he's jealous, and he's trying to murder him. And it's a Wilhelm scream that we hear coming, emitting from Buzz as he falls out that window. Every play the clip. Well, there is a clip. There is a clip this time. Oh, this is terrible. This ruins the bit. There it is. Oh, I like it. 
Play it again. He just talked all over it. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> Mixed in pretty good, too. It's not annoying, because sometimes they just lay it on so thick. It's like, what are you guys doing? It's almost like the, the score drops out, right. everything becomes silent, yeah. and then <laughs> it's, it's just it's on features, its own. Yeah. 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 It's just... <laughs> but that was kind of mixed in nicely. That was that was uh, I, almost done tactfully, right? Sure. It's a, it's a, it's a, the movie itself is self-referential because it's toys from other properties, other uh, walks of life. So, yeah, it makes sense they would draw in other elements of other uh, uh, entertainment. That was one of the first times we saw something like that, right? Where they were using other properties in their own, which now uh, annoys no. me to no end. And we were talking about it just with Florence uh, yesterday. And one of, I think, one of the red light, green light, maybe the one that we're going to be playing in this episode. And I was, I was talking about how there's just too much of that. Uh, Roger Rabbit would be uh, oh, yeah, would yeah. be a okay. seminal. I read an article about that. Oh yeah, what, yeah. what did it say? It said Roger Rabbit's the first one to ever do that. It's <laughs> <laughs> weird that you wouldn't reference that. Wait, wait, does Space Jam come? Be? No, Space Jam came way after. Ninety six, right? yeah. yeah. 90, how do you know that, Brian? I love Space Jam. God, just you, <laughs> you, you. I've never seen it. Okay, are you serious? No, I'm sorry, I've never seen it. <sighs> That was a close call. Actually, I didn't even know if it was 96. Could have been 94. I have no fucking idea. You said it was such a I did. Pedaling. I really I was I gaslighting you. the idea of Space Jam so much. It makes me so uncomfortable. Just 1996? Looking, looking yeah, at the from it? deep. I feel like you probably love this movie. i never seen it. I love the idea of it. So you're telling me you don't love Space Jam, and you read an article about <laughs> A lot of things you're saying aren't yeah. lining up. A lot of... <laughs> <laughs> not adding up. Wait, why would you? Why would you not love Space Jam and run out to see it when you're such a fan of Roger Roger Rabbit and they, they share a lot of the same DNA? I think that well, Roger Rabbit came several years earlier, so that that's appealed yeah, to me. Yeah, and you loved it. I did. And then okay, I don't know. Space Jam never appealed to me. You know, Looney Tunes don't appeal to me. Get them out. Really? Get them the fuck. I was mm. very happy when I was driving with uh, Atticus and there. I would listen to Kids Place Live or whatever on the old uh, satellite. Mm. And uh, they're playing Looney Tunes music. And I'm like, you don't know what this, because I, I hear it. Right. And it just puts me back to like Saturday morning, sure. lazy time in my in, like, uncomfortable, lazy time as a child. Being adored. Yeah. Or just, you know, sports. Yeah. Or like, I, I got to, you know, find my cleats because I got to go play for my fucking dad and get right. yelled at. I just, I, the, 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 the smell of fresh cut grass makes me <laughs> nauseous. And I was thinking about it when watching Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons. You're really ruined because when that's I, always a delightful smell. When I smell it, it reminds me of like early mornings on the field having a massive pressure on me and just being uncomfortable and, and upset with my dad coaching. Uh, but yeah, my Atticus did not know what Looney Tunes was. He didn't. He didn't oh, recognize good. the music. Cut like, it off. Yeah, cut it off there. Plus, you know, you don't want to watch in that shit. Do you mind you know, the amount of violence in that shit? In subtle racism. There's subtle racism. There's a lot of. Racism, there's a lot yeah, broad racial comedy. A lot of that, which but, I love. But it's it's the pan. It's like just the stuff. It's like they were trying to teach small toddlers to be as violent as yeah. possible back then. That was humor. It was. It was just like frying pans to the face. It's hilarious. Oh, people getting bashed, and then they're, they're straight up trying to murder each other mm -hmm. with wild coyote. Giant and, guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Giant guns be and teaching kids you can plug a gun with your fingers, or you can tie it in a knot. That's right. Yeah, I told you that Atticus's biggest fear is guns, right? Makes sense. Because he's obsessed with guns. He's the number one killer of uh, youth in America. And I was uh, I was asking him just in on the fly. It's fun to just ask him like random shit. Sure. I'm like, hey, what are the three things you're most scared of? And like, without batting an eye, he's like, number one is guns. I'm like, dude, but you're fucking, you're obsessed with them. He's like, yeah, I know. That's why I'm scared Ooh. of them. And that's why I like, I, I'm fast. I, he didn't say fascinating, but that's why I like. Like a moth to a flame. And now I want to tell him that we have a gun in the house because it will blow his mind, but there's no way I can do that. Oh. But I, I'm always <laughs> wanting to do that. <laughs> I want to like pull out the real gun and be like, "This is a fucking gun, dude! Look at this! Like you it would a, blow." You have a gun his little... Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, of course right. I have a gun. Give me. What? Gotta have a gun. I'm not judging. I just didn't know that. No. I I don't think everyone should be armed, but I think I should be. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Well put. Number two for me, Reggie. Do you do number two? You retired. Oh, you retired. Have another one. Oh yeah, yeah. My other one. Uh, oh, I like this one a lot. I almost just admitted Toy Story, but I, I figured that again in the, in the history it's of fun. things, it, it should be there. Uh, this is another Pixar movie. This came later, 2009, a little movie called Up. This is the only one I could find. Oh, is it the dogs? The dogs. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only Wilhelm scream I've ever seen used for an animal screaming. Mm. Uh, this is where a pack of rabid dogs goes flying off of a cliff, all of them. And one of them, yeah, you can hear Wilhelm. Come on. This is a recording of a recording. Let's go. Picture it now. <laughs> there it was. 
Oh, it's subtle. It's hard to yeah, hear. It's it is subtle. You hear, that, you hear the howling. But, uh, yeah, that's a recording of a recording. Unfortunately, somebody just holding up their phone to the TV, so mm-hmm. it's not the cleanest. Uh, but I like it a lot. Enjoy it. I like it a lot. One of the, one of the dogs is Wilhelming to his death. Uh, number two for me is quite a contrast because uh, it, it involves death, but also uh, it's very bad. Is it good? Oh, it's so bad. No, you have yeah. bad. This towards is the, the top. worst use of a Wilhelm scream because. Wait, it so comes, what does top five mean in this in this category? In this sense, I just wanted Most to do fun. notable ones or ones that I uh, had an opinion on because uh, mo- mostly Wilhelm screams would kind of come and go, and it's like, ah, oh, I recognize that. Mm-hmm. I read an article about it. <laughs> <laughs> Number two for me, however, uh, it comes. You must have a, mispronounced it when you read it out loud. The Willem yeah. scream. Yeah, oh, the Willem scream. Yeah. The Willem scream. <laughs> <laughs> Number two for me is uh, a very um, serious movie. Mm. Very serious, and it's very the accused. Right, it's the most serious part of this serious movie. When she's on the pinball machine, doesn't. And <laughs> why would you? Why would you wedge a Wilhelm scream into the third the act of the Mist? Oh yeah, it's pretty good. It the is, spiders. It is very distracting. Yeah. When 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 they're they're making, I just use the words a lot. When when they're, they're uh, when they're making their escape from the uh, convenience store, the grocery yeah. store, and uh, one of the uh, escapees uh, ends up uh, on the wrong end of a pack of giant spiders. Yeah. And uh, this is a white knuckle ride the yeah. whole way, and you are literally. This is the part where they're making the big leap, like they're they're going for freedom, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh my god, are they gonna make it? And all of a sudden. Fucking Wilhelm. Oh, we got the clip. Go ahead and, yeah, there it is. That's so distracting. Why mm. would you play that? It is. I mean, it was long enough ago enough that maybe people weren't on to the Wilhelm scream, perhaps. I had read also many years before. Also, studios, uh, you know, they have their, their sound guys who mm. kind of go rogue sometimes. They do True. their own thing. Now, Corey, my sound guy, absolutely loved him, and we had a great time, and we mixed my movie. It took three days. Uh, and, and Rick, my uh, composer, was there. It was it was a really really fun time, and, and it was a lot of hard work. We really nailed it down, but like he suggested, he wanted to put a Wilhelm scream in, and I could have been a dick and be like, absolutely not in my movie. He showed me where it was. It was subtle enough, and I'm like, oh, okay. Sometimes sound editors kind of do their own thing, and then don't get you know called out. Like so, right. perhaps this sound editor just did went his rogue. own thing. Yeah, went We're, rogue. All right, it's possible. I can't picture uh, what's the fuck though, Debon, De- Darabont. Darabont. Yeah. Well, there was problems with the studio. Remember, he didn't get the budget he wanted with the effects. Well, but that would tells me he gets to hire his own guys too. Mm. I don't know. I well, don't know. Who knows? But yeah, it was way out of place. There should not have been used. What's your However, it needed it though because I. Why? Because I was actually imagining being eaten by those spiders and what that <laughs> must felt like. Because you don't see him getting eaten, so it's all in the imagination, mm. and he goes down behind the cars, and I needed a little like tension breaker. I will say, I will say, the movie had uh, built built up quite the amount of tension. Yes, you you like you've acknowledged. Number one for me is uh, a comedy, and it's, same, it's the the funniest use of the Wilhelm scream I've ever seen. Okay, and uh, it's our boy John Cho making the the sound. John oh, Chul. from uh, Harold and Kumar. Harold and Kumar. Yeah. So they're riding uh, through a jungle. Uh, Are they in a Pegasus or something? Yeah, they're in some kind of mythical yeah. creature. And uh, they were getting so close to, to White Castle, like they, they were finally going to almost get there. And there was a large branch, mm-hmm. and it's like obviously done with like green screen. It might have been blue screen back then, 2004. And uh, you, you can see, I've watched this clip like numerous times this week. And you can see he's probably on one of those things like Honey Boy where yeah, he's being pulls pulled back. back. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we should have asked him about that. It's very, very funny. But uh, and the the use of I thought that they might have cranked it up to make it a little Mm -hmm. higher pitched as well. But I don't think so. I think it's just we'll we'll just hear it now without watching the clip. And and here's here's what it sounds like. (laughs) This is awesome. We're going to be in White Castle in no time. That was close. Yeah, it does sound sound higher. Cranked it up a A little little bit, right? And that's that's John just going just retreating back into the forest. And uh, Kumar has no idea. Yeah. Out of frame. Out of frame. And he just keeps going. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. We're going to be in White Castle. Oh. Oh. That was close. There we go. Was. Just out of sight. Just He gets smaller and smaller. He's just back there. You hear the little album. It's fun. That's my number one. It's my favorite. That's good. It's my fave. Well, number one for me is a comedy also. I thought for sure the Sarlacc sucking down that one dude was going to no, be that, from that was, Return of the that Jedi. That was too much. That was gilding the little. That's one of the ones where they like, almost like dropped the score and like, you know, made sure everything was yeah. quiet. You, all you can hear is it, well. It was deafening. Yeah. So to speak. Okay, I'm sorry. Metaphorically. No, number one, a um, bit of a letdown for, uh, considering Anderson's going to shit all over it, but the best, use, the, best use, the best use of a uh, Wilhelm is in Spaceballs. 
because it's a parody of Star Wars and it fits in perfectly. Mm -hmm. Everything about Star Wars is ripe for parody in this movie. It's self-referential. And uh, you got it when uh, uh, good old Barf there uh, pulls the pipes off the wall mm. and uh, shoots the lasers back at the uh, stormtroopers. Yeah, hey, I, I have no problem with this. Yeah, this is it's good. fine. It's it's, it's uh, I, I like the stunt when the guy gets shot in the ass as he's doing the Wilhelm scream. That's good. Oh, Avery, I think we might, I might have sent you a uh, might have sent you a, a clip for 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 this one. There it is. There yeah, it is. That, that, that's it right there. That's what the guy sounds mm. like when he does the flip and he gets shot in the ass. Yep, enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did he send you a clip? That was it. No. May the Schwartz be with you. That was it right there. You didn't hear it? Hey, play it again. No, okay. All right. Do we have a listener list this week? We do. We do. Compiled right. by the Mitch Burns. Mitchies. He said a little sparse this week. Uh, only eight submissions. So what? here is a sampling. What in the world, guys? What's the matter with you? You know what, though? This is it's a, a bit, bit academic. Of a it's a bit of a deep poll. Mm. From Oliver Smith, Star Wars New Hope, of course, when a stormtrooper gets shot and falls down a tunnel. Mm-hmm. I think that was the first time I'd ever heard of one as well, says Mitch. Lewis Longshadow, a Longshad. memorable uh, one, is from the Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Mm-hmm. And now falls off like the wall it. of Helm's like No. Bum. Emily Hood uh, said there are way too many good ones. One, Tropic Thunder, Ben Stiller tosses the little kid off his back. Two, Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear goes out the window. Enjoyable. Uh, three, Wet Hot American Summer, Kid Trips Over a Bush. Yeah, that was a good one. Four, Team America, Guy Shot Off Balcony. And number five, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Harold flies off the back of the cheetah. Cheetah, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, I thought they were on like a, a winged thing, but I guess not. I thought that was a mythical creature as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks, Mitch. Thanks, guys, for uh, submitting. I realize that everyone knows what this is just by name, and if you do know what it is, it might be hard to pull like a specific example, so appreciate the uh, listener list. Anderson, this episode's gone on far longer than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. Should we uh, no. say Florence? No, oh, we put Florence in it. We, we promise the people of Florence, and they get to Florence. We've been gone for a couple of weeks. We're going to give them a little extra. All right, let's gamble and get out of here. Yeah. Well, so, are we still? No, no. We're going to go to Florence right now, and then we'll come oh, back. Oh, okay. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, nice. All right. Take it away, Florence. Thank you, Florence, for being part of the show. Uh, we appreciate you. Appreciate you inviting us up to your uh, sweet suite up at the uh, Chateau Marmont, overlooking Sunset Boulevard and the entire cityscape of Los Angeles. That was a grand view. Yeah, I did a quick little room tour, too, because the room is kind of unbelievable and super. It's like an apartment. Yeah. Mm. And it's super quaint and just of its era and a lot of things were obviously untouched yeah. and you know at least uh kept intact for right. all of these years so i did a fun little run through uh and, uh, and i'll post that on uh, uh for for everyone who uh, uh is at that level all right, all right. And i don't want to you know to be out there for the masses get a little privacy and you know yeah, Florence for is god's like, sake yeah but it'll uh, for that for the watch along level and above all right, Avery, what are we gambling on before? Oh, I hate yeah. doing that, though. I hate, I hate well, we like, having off. tears and stuff, but you kind of have to, you right? Have you to. have to fucking have to do it. I think people are okay with it. I don't point. like the tears. I don't like it. It causes tears. Every time I go to AMC, I feel like a douche when I have to cut in line. I'm like in the little yellow rope line. I'm like, ah, I'm going to go next, and you've been standing in line longer than me. I fucking hate the feeling, every time but I'm I, late for the movie. Every time I do that, I get angry that they don't take me faster. Mm-hmm. I actually got out of that line once. I think it was AMC. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not, of course, it's AMC. It was your. It was the Century City one. Yeah, they don't. They don't respect the yellow line. Well, I mean, there's so many people that are Stubbs oh, members at that one that that line is longer than the non-Stubbs. So I just hopped in the non stub member, and then like she's like, "Hey, I, you don't have to stand in this line." I'm like, "But it's much shorter." The the phrase "What is this? What is a list for? Even for may have escaped my lips." Uh, as I'm standing in the line while the others get, the the fucking uh, poor people get taken in front of me. Don't like it. And you said that audibly? No. I, I, I think I, I uttered to Chris, I'm like, what's this even for? What do I even That's why for? I don't have a list. Yeah. See? You get taken first. Oh, yeah, because that would be your theater. Smart. You get it's a great pop, fucking you theater. popcorn first. It's a great theater. It's a good theater. Yeah. They got Prime and Dolby and IMAX. Okay. Well, so does mine. Settle down. All right, let's uh, g- oh, wrap up gambling. From we don't have IMAX. We are paying off Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Michelle Rodriguez. Nice. Last week, Anderson guessed uh, 76. Brian guessed 91 wow. with 269. Ooh. Yeah, yeah right. nice. He guessed that while reading the Wilhelm uh, article. That's right. The actual review, uh, the actual Rotten Tomato score is 90%. They Swish. Brian the winner. Nope. 90, 91 is what you said. So we still, are we still doing the thing where uh, winner of the month assigns... Or gets to choose the watch along. That's right. Because I w- I'm already one up on the. Okay, well you're gonna own a couple because yeah. I mean we already did this month as well with All the, right. and we gave it to Florence. So. All right. 
Plus, I think we're going to retire that uh, at some point soon. So uh, we're going to retire the uh, watch along soon. Really? I can't watch any more movies with you. It's uh, <laughs> it's difficult. It's a weird reason. It's a weird reason to kill that bit, but okay. <laughs> Not a bit. It's a thing. Really? It takes like five hours, six hours. It's enjoyable. Uh, is it is your it, house? Is it enjoyable? It it's is. a party. I, I like hanging out with people. It's party. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm raging. I'm, I'm partying. <laughs> doing it. All right. <laughs> you were at late partying last night. I was partying hard last night. Partying by wrapping cable around your arm. <laughs> All right. Uh, we getting out of here? Do we, we no, come back from Florence like, already? Yeah. Yeah, we got a gamble now. You said thanks? I did. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. I missed all that. You did. How was it? It was good. It was yeah. great. It was one of our best. It's very good. <laughs> this week, <laughs> we're going to gamble on uh, Renfield. Uh huh. Love it. You Love. seen this? Have I seen it? Are you seeing this? Yeah, of course. Why, of course? Trailer made me laugh. <sighs> Trailer gave me the giggles. Is this considered a reboot? Absolutely. I guess it would be. Yeah, I'm out. Or at least uh, existing property. The trailer worked for you. The first one. This trailer does. It looks like dog shit. It looks really, really bad. I to disagree. Me. It looks awful to me. The, the Nicholas Cage portion looks really bad, which hurts me. Hurts me to say, but it could. Just, do you know this is the second time he's done the the vampire thing? Vampire's Kiss, right? Oh, third time. Ooh, Nosferatu. He was in there, right? No, what? No, that was a Willem Dafoe, I thought. Wait, when when else did he do a vampire? Of course, it was Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe's redoing the Nosferatu. Wait, wait. Vampire's Kiss. I thought there was another vampire thing that he did. Ah, oh, god damn it. Nah, I'm making shit up. Yeah, it was Vampire's Kiss. Never mind. Sorry. All right. Let's let's just everything that happened in the last 30 seconds, try to just cleanse your mind of it. Can do. Just those two. All right, we're gonna we're gonna Son of a bitch. gamble on this. Redfield. Do we have a director? Do we have any idea who directed this? Baird. Barry? Baird. John S. Baird? Yeah. Same director as fucking Drudges and Dragons? That's right. I mean, Tetris? Mm, that's right. Chris McKay. That's what oh, I meant. Oh, love that's Chris what I McKay. Meant. Love Chris McKay. Yeah, he, I was looking up what he does, and it's not good. Well, it's not stuff that you know you and I love. The Tomorrow World. I don't oh, like his IMDb the, picture much either. Is that the George Clooney? Why don't you take a look at his IMDb picture and tell me what you think? I might actually see the score. Nicholas Cage. IMDb. Is in this. Oh, IMDb. No, I'm a purist. He has a, a uh, Captain America tattoo on his forearm. No, it is not. Yeah, 100% does. Oh, that's upsetting. What's his name? Chris McKay. You see this? Are you seeing this? That's his, that's his IMDb picture. What if we just that's start judging movies by their IMDb <laughs> picture? Oh, that's upsetting. That is troubling. Yeah. I need mean, Lego Batman. That means it's very hard to conceal most days. <laughs> oh. It looks happy. Yeah. Okay. It'd be funnier if it was on his ass. That'd be a good place. For that would be a much better place. Oh, the place. Tomorrow War. I never saw that. I already said, I said the Tomorrow World 20 minutes ago. You didn't say Tomorrowland. Oh, that's what I call it. <laughs> I always called it that. Didn't I? Oh, no, yeah, I, I call it Tomorrowland mm, tomorrow. Something. All right. Let's get out of here. What are you doing? He edited the Lego movie. Okay. That's a good sign. Like AI did. <laughs> that was chat GPT. Why, why is he leaning like that? And we're in the V-neck. He's and like looking so over. serious. The only way he can get away with this is if he didn't pick, pick this picture. Do you That's think the he, only way that this is acceptable. If he picked this stumbled? picture, you don't pick. Yeah. What? Why? I'm why nervous. is he leaning? It's I'm, like it's I'm like nervous. he just asked like a very serious question. No, he's I'm like, "What do you think?" Film. And he like leans and he's like, "Make sure that <laughs> you get you get at least half of my Captain America tattoo in there, please." That was. Look at this. He's leaning like he's the author of a romance novel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't mind that. He's like, yes, I wrote Fifty Shades. What of it? This is going to be Brian on the back of the Blu-ray for his movie. Oh, I'm so out of this movie. So done. So out. <laughs> what have we got coming up? Okay, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm Johnny ready. Quest. I'm ready. In. All right. Let's uh, guess a number. All right, I'm going to guess a number. 101. <laughs> on three. Sure. Uh, wait, hold on. Okay. One, two, 69. <laughs> what? Oh, we're off by two. I said 71. I was laughing at my own joke. You were. That's good. It was very funny. That's all right. It was a good joke. It was super funny. It. Dude, you're, I'm, I laughed at who? 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 All right, let's get, let's get going. 33 reviews. The current Rotten Tomato score is... Ah! <laughs> Drops are coming into the show, finally. <laughs> 
Seventy six percent. Could go either way. Could go either way. Mm. Thirty three reviews is pretty low. So seventy would be a time. <laughs> it just looks like Nicolas Cage doing. I, I love that man. I loved that man. Uh, okay. So right. above seventy, I win. Below seventy, you win. Seventy is a tie. Right. We'll see. Okay. Let's, let's get going. Let's, oh no, no! <laughs> Why do I think that he was. Oh, yeah, that's pre- pretty good listener art, huh? It's pretty good. Yeah, I meant to show that to Atticus earlier because he watched that movie without me and he cried. And if you were to see me as the MVP chimp, I think it would blow his little mind. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Most valuable podcaster yeah. from the director of Groupers. Oh, that was great work, Jim Rutherford. That's fun stuff. I am furious. Uh, I am enraged. I am enraged. <laughs> I am enraged. <laughs> I'm still enjoying it. That's good. All right, check that out over at Anderson and Brian.com or on Facebook, Instagram, lots of places we have uh, social media. If you'd like to connect with us, go to uh, Anderson and Brian on Instagram, Anderson and Brian on TikTok, The Film Vault on Twitter, The Film Vault on Facebook, or The Film Vault Podcast on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. Yeah, uh, I got to get better at, at promoting that. We should talk about that right off uh, at the back. Like if you have like an office job or something and you want to kind of like listen and then, you know, click on if something happens or something like that, it's a good way to listen. Like if you, if you can just have it on one of your tabs, a lot of people do listen to podcasts that way. And the stuff that Eric Kath is doing when he's, when he's breaking things down, at least you can go over it to the channel afterwards or not even listen to the show if you want to just listen to our reviews, which is a terrible thing to, to say, but it's true. Uh, he, he breaks down our reviews and, and uh, individually puts up many of them. Not all of them. You'd miss a whole lot of the show. But there's little bite-sized pieces, shareable pieces, Ooh. that kind of thing. Speaking of bite size, if you're a Patreon subscriber, do not miss our spoiler talk about D&D, Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, we had an sh- opportunity to talk about the little man and the spoiler. We yeah. never even did that. It's not a hero there. All right. Hmm. I thought that I'd made a pretty compelling argument as to why a cameo wouldn't spoil anything and actually might make people go see a movie if they wouldn't. And, or make you excited, like, when's the cameo coming? And then you still skirted the issue. I did. Yeah. Looking out for you, the uh, the listener. Thanks to uh, all of our Patreon subscribers. If you want to check us out over there, patreon.com slash thefilmvault. The previously mentioned Eric Kath, also Mike Cole, Mitch Burns, and Giovanni. Thanks, you guys, for your help. Week in and week out, appreciate you a lot. Uh, Chris B.R.? So yeah, the assigner and the decider this week. Chris Behar, the MVP, the real MVP, was valuable primate slash podcaster slash assigner. Oh, wait. Did we get his list? Oh, he didn't do one. Oh, okay, I was about to say I felt terrible. He really wanted to sit back and just kind of uh, let us take the reins and uh, learn about the old Wilhelm. It was like almost like uh, he asked the, the professors to uh, do a class specifically for sure. him on a subject that he was interested in. A master class, mm-hmm. if you will. All right, I hope you got your money's worth, Chris Spihar. We appreciate the assignment. We appreciate the uh, topic. It was all good. If you guys want to assign us a movie or assign us a topic, go over to our Patreon and sign up for the assigner uh, decider level. And uh, yeah, it's all it's all there. It's all self-explanatory. Until next time, we do it for Vangu.